In August 2002, ABC News was given unprecedented access to the New York Police Department. Walking into the unknown. It's always fun. For the next 16 months, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, a team of journalists accompanied the NYPD into unpredictable and dangerous situations. When we got stabbed here, so we're trying to figure out who did it. Lives are in the balance. Eight million people, 37,000 cops, NYPD 24-7. I'm Dennis Franz. When you become a New York City cop, for better or worse, you're part of a family. And here at NYPD Blue, we know how tough the job can be and the toll it can take. What we're about to show you in this True Life series from ABC News are the real cops, men and women who put their lives on the line every day. Tonight on NYPD 24-7, a body is found at the bottom of a manhole. Sergeant Andy Dietz suspects foul play. And Detective Dan Austin of the Crime Scene Unit, who calls each victim a client demanding justice. Queens News Time 706. Police say a 25-year-old bartender was killed early yesterday when he fell down a downtown manhole, dropping 15 feet into boiling water. Officers aren't sure whether Kyle McGarity slipped into it by accident while roughhousing with a friend or was pushed. It happened at Pearl and Fulton about 4.40 a.m. Were you one of the first guys here? Yeah, I was with him. Yeah. Was he in the water? Yeah, he was half in, half out. He was, uh, his legs were in the water. His head was this way, he was facing up. Legs What's the temperature of that water? We first got there from the steam was at 300. Did he boil to death? Yeah. I, you never know what's gonna happen. Shortly after dawn, Sergeant Andy Dietz and his team from Manhattan South Homicide are called to investigate a death that is as mysterious as it is shocking. Don't go yet. You know why? I gotta look at the body inside for one thing. The That's face. not a problem. All right. We'll lean on Clark anyway. What's that blue stuff on his stone? Uh, it looks like he was wearing like a tie-dye type shirt. Uh, okay. Like All right. Yeah, you can seal that up now. You really start to f***ing reek back here. The victim goes down the manhole cover. It had the uh, stack on it, you know, for it to release the steam. But somehow that gets knocked out of the way and he goes down there and he basically boils to death. So we're trying to sort out exactly what happened. A story being told by a couple who live close by indicates that the victim may not have fallen into the manhole by accident. A woman and a husband say they heard, don't break my legs, don't break my legs. All right, and some sort of fight going on right outside here. I begged his hands because the other guy has scratch marks all over his face. I guess everybody, they like the mystery. They want to solve the crime. We get to do it for a living. Body still on the scene. Body still on the scene. In Brooklyn, another body is turned up, this time in a playground. <laughs> Detectives Dan Austin and his partner Wayne Quashi are assigned to the crime scene unit. Well, they did say the guy jumped, didn't they? Well, they don't know if he's thrown or if he jumped. In this case, Police must determine if the victim, who fell 25 stories to his death, committed suicide or was murdered. It's possible that he might have been hit with something or shot or pushed off the roof, who knows. But he's dead, we do know that. We do know he's dead. <laughs> I don't have the kind of job where I can sit down at the dinner table and say, hey, look what I accomplished today. I can't sprawl out crime scene photographs showing mutilated dead bodies and, and homicidal victims. You know, we have this take your daughter to work day. Well, that's great. If I was maybe a dentist or a lawyer, for me, take your daughter to work day would not be a good idea. It's about a 250 foot fall. 250 feet, that's not jump change. See the bench? Yeah, he bounced off the bench. Yeah, okay, watch his, watch his step. This is hat. To this day, my wife probably doesn't know what I really do 100%. She may have like a 20% inkling as to what I do. The other 75% she's in the dark about. What a mess. Guys and girls, I recommend if you're gonna stand here, please stand all the way back there in the corner. There's yes. pieces of brain and everything else all over the place. I, you definitely don't wanna bring this home on your shoes. It is my job to document that crime scene, put that crime scene into some kind of order. She packed this little. My job is to make order out of chaos. It's 
Supposedly there's some, uh, what they think is blood and brain matter up on the roof. If the victim was already bleeding on the roof, no. it could mean that he was attacked before he went over the edge. You know what? This is a very interesting, but he, he could have climbed up on this. Common sense is extremely important. There's certain things that I can look for, different signs of a struggle, because I know if somebody's gonna throw me off the roof, I'm gonna fight like hell or I'm gonna take that person with me, I guarantee it. The fall alone would kill you. No, I hope. You know? <laughs> yeah, you gotta hope he was... Uh... I hope he was unconscious. What a way to go. His head was on that... On the platform, the concrete yeah, part. His legs were in the water. Back in Manhattan, Sergeant Dietz is just as puzzled about his victim. Did Kyle McGarity fall into a manhole by accident, or was he pushed by his friend, Keith Masters? Obviously, they had a fight. We don't know if maybe the fight broke up and one guy was down there and this guy just stumbled into the hole. We're not sure yet. You know, it's not easy to move that. Educated guess would be that during a struggle, they knocked it over. You know, nothing intentional, I'm sure, just an accident, but still, somebody is dead. Nah, I think this thing was just a, uh, two drunks having a fight and unfortunate where they happen to have the fight. If there's no manhole cover there, nobody gets hurt. The question will be whether or not uh, he pushed him into Yeah. See where the scaffolding is? Found a guy with a pickaxe in the back of his head. Made a collar on that. The two main interviews we're going to have to do is the guy Keith, who had the fight with the victim, and Keith's girlfriend, who was there. She's a, you know, they had two eyewitnesses. So we got to try and get, find out what the story is, what the truth is. It's one of the few precincts where the detective squad is on the third floor, not the second. Sergeant Andy Dietz's team of homicide detectives will work with detectives from the first precinct where the manhole incident took place. When we get to a precinct, we're there to help them. It's not one guy solving crime, it never is. It's a team effort. Male white. He's a male white. They're very good friends, they do everything together. Yesterday morning, victim and Keith had an argument. So they're in this bar, I guess they have another argument in the bar. Somewhere along the line, they leave the bar, they go to McDonald's. They get into another argument in there. Just arguing back and forth. But at the corner, apparently they get into a fight. Victim falls down this manhole, it's about 20 feet. What was the cause of death, though? They say I don't the know fall yet. Or the, you know, <clears throat> the was it an impact on the, That's it. any blood? They, or? Him for a talk they showed me this picture. I thought he was a black guy. Right. He's a white guy. Yeah. Yeah. He, was he, was basically, he basically boiled to death is what we're figuring. Yeah, I don't think it was in their heads, oh, let's have a fight by the manhole. It was just uh, it was a freak thing and uh, led to a tragedy. A tragedy that could mean a murder charge if Keith Masters, the only suspect, deliberately pushed his friend into a manhole. Keith says he fell into the manhole, and he's on in the manhole like this, holding himself up with his elbows, and the victim falls past him. That's how he gets scratches on his face, and he goes down the hole. Yeah, he claims he, he, he fell, fell after the victim went down no, or no, before no, no, the victim? Before. He's holding himself up by the elbows, and the victim falls past him. Just trying to visualize what he he's telling you happened, you just say, hold on, let's back up here, because there's no way that could have happened. That's a hell of a long way down, though. Wow. So I think if Detective Austin's victim was pushed or thrown from this roof, there should be clues showing that something violent took place. Most of the rooftops that we deal with are gravel. So if I'm going to struggle, I would expect to see that gravel kicked up, divots and holes. I didn't have that. Where did they say they saw something up here? If you look around, you see like little little red pieces. Well, I see a lot of rocks that are red. The black part? That's a berry. That's from the trees down there. That's a berry. That's not blood. Who the fuck said it was brain matter? Who said it was brain matter? Somebody told me it was brain matter. That's a berry. Must have been, must have been pitch black when you guys are up here looking around. With no sign of struggle or physical evidence that the victim was injured before the fall, murder is ruled out. It's a suicide. More like a suicide, huh? Yeah, I think so, Wayno. When you're looking up, it doesn't look that bad. When you're looking down, it's a hell of a way down. Oh, 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 oh. 
You all right, dude? Where'd you hit your back? I thought you hit your back. Your like, <laughs> oh, yeah, ah, that's good. You got a big one of those. Ready? I think I'll give you the gold medal for that one, pal. No, brother. It's been done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. On this job, you realize that, well, death is kind of simple. It's extremely simple. It's not mystified anymore. It's mundane, it's routine, it's going to happen. And yeah, all that window dressing when you go to the funeral parlor and all that, I've always said, you know what? Don't waste any money on me. Do it simple. Put me in the crematory, spend a couple hundred bucks, put me in a little box, put me on a shelf. When you're tired of looking at me, just sprinkle me over the water and we'll call it quits right there. Because really, that's you know life in a nutshell. You think you're having a tough day? Look at this poor guy, he's having a real tough day. But how do you slide a 75-pound manhole so cover? He He's saying the cover is three quarters old. There's the barrier. That's there's right. all the requirements and like that. Right. Right. At the first precinct in Lower Manhattan, detectives are skeptical of Keith Masters' claim that he and his friend Kyle McGarity both fell into a manhole accidentally. But in my life, I've never heard of anybody walking into a manhole. I don't know if anyone else has, but I've never heard of it. They can see it on TV in Benny Hill. You see it a lot on Bugs Bunny, too, but, it, it, you know, it's not really realistic that it's going to well, happen. Coyotes, uh, this is Carlos talking to this guy, so I'll relay the information. It might help you. Good. Sergeant Dietz gets a call from one of his detectives who has been questioning yeah. Keith Masters, the victim's friend. Why is he in the hospital? Masters is being treated at a nearby hospital for scratches to his face, which he claims were connected to the accident. All right, how does he get out of the hole? All right. And then what does he do after that? Does he call 911? What does he do? He just stands around? Around 0200, they decide to leave because one of them has a pool table and they're going to go play pool. Okay. They stop at McDonald's. They get something to go. They start wrestling. It's macho yeah. stuff. No, okay. you know, no they, argument, just macho they, stuff. Were they into it? Oh, the box. Okay. Carlos doesn't think he's, like, actually lying. He's drunk. He's still drunk. Mm -hmm. But he's getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is I don't know. I, I got a cup, a pack of cigarettes. You know, he fell in a hole. I fell in a hole. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Like I told you before, I'm Detective Ramona Williams. I work in Manhattan South Homicide Squad. This woman tells a story that is very different from the one being told by the suspect. She says that what she saw from her apartment window didn't look like good-natured horseplay. I was sleeping. Okay. Um, I woke up because my husband jumped out of bed and he says that there's a fight outside, something's going on, and then we heard guys scream, don't break my legs, don't break my legs. Okay. Did you hear anybody respond to that? No, there was some yelling. It wasn't like a clear conversation, like just having an argument. Right. There was noises in between, um, sounded like somebody was really just getting the crap beat out of them. You could look out your window and visibly see who was standing out there? Yes. I saw a man and a woman down there, and she was screaming. He fell down the hole, he fell down the hole. That screaming woman, a potentially vital witness, is the girlfriend of the suspect, Keith Masters. Now, she appeared to be upset. She was freaking out. The man said, you're being hysterical, just go home, just go home. And then he ran over to the hole. He started, you know, screaming his name. Me, I want to die. Nice, go to bed one night, a little sleepy-eyed, and... That's it, just not wake up in the morning. Go quietly, you know? Wishful thinking, huh? Yeah, wishful thinking. On this night, crime scene detectives Dan Austin and Wayne Quashie are called to an apartment building in the Borough Park section of Brooklyn. What's up, guys, girls? The body's in this building. Okay, up on the, the third, five, third floor? Uh, fourth floor. Up. How come I can't get jobs with elevators? A 49-year-old man has been found dead on a stairwell landing. Here's our client. This person was laying there for four or five hours before somebody realized that this guy was dead. They just assumed that he was a homeless person sleeping in the hallway. Eh, wrong assumption. The victim's body is badly bruised and his skull fractured, indications that he may have been murdered. There's no blood. Uh, there's no indication of a struggle. There's no spatter on the walls. It almost gives you the sense immediately that there may be another crime scene. We had found out that the victim resided in the building directly next door. We're going to go up to the victim's apartment. Yeah. I am getting my exercise tonight. There's no doubt about this, man. 
This could be blood. I think this is blood. We could test it. Right off the bat, I now had an indication that, yes, something had transpired here. Nice, huh? Look at this. I got gloves that I can't get the, the fingers on. You'll be able to know right away if that's uh, blood on the, yeah. the carpet. When you get there, everybody is extremely serious and uptight. So I want to make people lighten up a little bit, a little sarcasm. And it's not because we're insensitive. You ever see that comedian? Who's that guy? Oh, yeah. What's it on his head like a, like a rooster? What the hell's his name again? Psycho EDP, there yeah. he is. I'm gonna do a little hemodent first, Wayne. If the tip of this turns dark, dark green, then we know it's blood. That is blood, fellas. Yeah. I'm the kind of guy who crosses all my T's and dots all my I's and makes sure that everything goes together and tells a story. Overall view into deceased room from entrance. That's a lot of blood. You want that crime scene to tell a story. You want to have your beginning, you want to have your middle, and then you want to have your end. It has to, everything has to make sense. And it has to be simple. TV was on when you guys got in here? TV was on, the light was on. It looked like he was watching TV, but just walked out. Mm, that's bizarre. I still think there's more to the story here. I, I want to know how the guy got from building A to building B. I don't particularly think that he, in the condition that he was in, actually walked. Now, this is a strange one. There's something really odd about this. He pulls over, rolls down the window, and says, is everything okay? Mm -hmm. Male doesn't say anything. The female says, someone's in the manhole. He's driving Detective Joy Hefner reports on another witness, a private security guard for a firm called Alliance, who happens to arrive at the scene just minutes after the victim falls. The guy says to him, two men were fighting. Don't, tell, don't let them tell you anything else. I saw it for myself. Now, he's uh -huh. not sure. He says, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth. I'm not sure, but I think I heard him mumble. The guy tried to push him down the manhole. That's big. Huge. The Lions guy's going to know. What you'd be wearing for the right? You have to get everybody together and one at a time tell what they found out, what information did they discover. That's part of putting these pieces together. He's in a manhole. There's no... There's, 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 there's a there's, human there's, decision to be made here. Hey, let's get this guy out of the manhole, and that decision is not made. No, their decision is he's a write-off at this point. What do we do to save ourselves? <laughs> what they're doing right now is they, they, they're, they're arguing, dancing. what do we do? Do we leave? Do we stay? What, what do, do we do? Here. Come up with a story, whatever. But basically, there's no... Attempt you know, no attempt to assist this. And I would fella. guess if this alliance guy don't show up, they just walk off. The time frame is important too, because if it's five minutes, that's a long enough time that you could have killed the guy just by your inactivity exactly. and yeah. on each other, trying mm -hmm. to figure out what to do. Where's the Emmy? Detective Dan Austin wants the city medical examiner to tell him how a severely injured man could have walked up three flights of stairs, because if he didn't, it means that someone had to dump his body on the stairwell landing. He's been dead a while. I mean, he's in rigor. Yeah. We're gonna bag his hands first. We put the bags over his hands to preserve evidence. Nothing. He might have put his hands up to defend himself, which would leave some residue under his nails. Blood, skin, the hair, fibers. And all of these things can be analyzed, and we may come up with uh, somebody else's DNA. <coughs> you sound good, too. Really got yeah, he's got some nice stuff there. Right? Yeah. We're going to look for lacerations, bruising, puncture wounds that yeah. would indicate that he was struck with an object. Sharp points. And something, he came up there yeah, something. Point. Oh, look man. Look That's beautiful. No wonder why I gave up drinking, huh? You gave it up? You were doing last night. Okay. <laughs> I've never seen one where he has a depressed skull fracture. Well, it doesn't puncture. There's no puncture, nope. which is kind of bizarre. So it's not like somebody taking a hammer and whack. He's pretty well busted up. I mean, yeah. He's... Let me tell you something. Without his injuries that he has, he didn't walk up here by himself. I don't okay. think. No, okay. Somebody brought him up here. I think you're right. It's tough to determine that it is a homicide. It's one of those. It can be. It may not be. Well, first thing Monday morning, you'll know whether this is a definitive homicide or not. Okay. Merry Christmas and a happy New Year, huh? All right. Off to the next, Thomas said. Back in Manhattan, 
detectives will finally get to interrogate the suspect in the manhole case. Uh, we'll Keith upstairs. Masters has been brought to the first precinct still wearing his hospital gown. He's very agitated, he's pacing back and forth, he's nervous. And I'll go downstairs with you because... Jimmy Piccioni will conduct the interview. He is considered one of the most skilled questioners among detectives at Manhattan South Homicide. Joy's gonna go with you. Come on, Joy. Just you and I, Joy? Mm-hmm. All right. Let's go into that cave, Joy. There are times when you, that you bring somebody into that room to speak to them, and you think, this guy's gonna be easy. I'm gonna get a confession. I'm gonna break him. And it just doesn't happen. And there are other times you bring somebody into the room, and you think that they're a hot guy, and they're not gonna confess. But they do. I had to walk in the street. All right. Anytime you guys are ready. More than 12 hours have passed since the body of Kyle McGarity was discovered at the bottom of a manhole in Lower Manhattan. At the first precinct, the victim's friend, Keith Masters, claims that it was all an accident and that he, too, nearly fell down the manhole. But unlike the victim, who suffered extensive burns and bruising, Master seems to only have scratches on his face. Police photographers are brought in to give the suspect a head-to-toe examination and document any injuries they can find. I'm going to do a full body shot, then we'll do individual photos, and then I'll strip them down, and we'll photos of the chest area and so on. Okay. How many it's a homicide. I don't need about maybe 10. Okay. Obviously, we were looking for is his physical condition conducive to his story. If he fell over him, he would have some sort of bruising. He would also have maybe some burns. Maybe this was an accident. Maybe they were fighting. Or is he covering up a homicide? For the first time, police tell Masters that they are investigating the case as a homicide and that he is the main suspect. Well, I told him that. He went down to his hands and knees and he's in there crying right now. Maybe I can pray with him. Go pray with him and hold his hand. And Hallelujah, you bro. I think you got him, okay. you know? He's got the obvious oh, cut wounds and marks in the face. Right? He, I don't see any oh. abrasion. I not see that either. Yeah, on either wrong. He never goes into the hole. He never sees what? He never goes into the hole, Keith. That's he he makes like a that, statement right? to me when I asked him about the black and blue. Cause I got that when I, when I was in the uh, uh, manhole. <laughs> Under questioning from Jimmy Piccioni, the suspect stands by his story of an accident, even when told a witness heard the victim screaming, don't break my legs. Master says he doesn't remember having any fight with Kyle McGarity. There's just no way I would believe that he didn't remember the details. And he did remember, he just didn't want to share that with us. Crime scene, Detective Austin speaking. It's a male, okay. And he's gunshot, right? Bronx is rocking tonight, huh? <laughs> it's always rocking up there. All right, ten four. See you in a bit. All right. Where I was before I got here, I had no idea how deadly urban America as a whole really was. I was rudely awakened. It is nearly midnight. And Detective Dan Austin has been called to an apartment building where a delivery man from a Chinese restaurant has been shot dead. Homicides like this disturb me. And he's got one time in the chest, right? Yeah, it's probably the left nipple, went through the lung and uh, went through the aorta. It's probably still in the stomach, the bullet. Because the victim was rushed to the hospital, Austin must make sense of this crime scene without a body. Okay. It makes me extremely angry. Here you got an individual trying to make an honest living, probably a recent immigrant. He's trying to work the American dream, and he is uh, outright slaughtered. Yeah, Patty, this is a McGill. I want this to be a successful case. I, I, I want to be part of that success, so there's going to be a lot of work. I'm Detective Orson from Crime Scene. How you doing? Joe Cam. Okay, what I'm going to ask you to do is just help me out a little bit while you tell me what you need. Get everybody the f*** out of here, except for my, the, the first officer's in there and his partner's in there. I want to make sure nobody comes down the stairs, nobody steps in anything they're not supposed to step in. Other than that, everybody out, because okay. I, I'm going to be working in here. If we just keep People the are oblivious as to what we do. Oblivious. People will walk right through your crime scene. They will step in blood. They will kick shell casings. You want to try to keep people out to prevent disruption. I saw there wasn't just blood in one spot on the floor. It went from point A to a point that... I couldn't determine unless I followed it. Ah! 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 
No, th right there. Probably yeah, probably down there. It started probably right around here. This is probably spit. Well, that's a good thing. You make sure nobody comes down and steps on it. Anybody comes down, just make sure they don't step in the, in the spit. When you see certain things, they pop out at you like spit. I'm going to take some swabbings for uh, saliva. And hopefully we get a DNA recovery on it. Saliva, S-A-L-I-V-A, right? S-A-L-I-V-A. Here's another one. AS5. And this spit on the floor would make me think maybe we had a group of people congregating in this area almost like waiting, uh, like a hunter would wait to kill a deer. They're waiting to pounce on this victim. We have a lot here. We're going to be here for at least five or six hours, so I hope you're not in a rush to go on any no. day today. Because <laughs> no. I guarantee you're going to be late. Oh, 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 oh. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, 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 oh. Merry Christmas. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Hi, Lieutenant. Hi, guys. Hi, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, 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 oh. Have you been a good boy all year? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Is, is Joy in there? <laughs> Detectives Jimmy Piccioni and Joy Hefner are ready to question Keith Masters' girlfriend. If they can get her to admit she saw her boyfriend fighting with the victim, police plan to use the statement to try and get the boyfriend to confess. She was very important. We need to speak to her to find out what happened, so we'd be able to confront him with his inconsistencies, with his lies. So I'm gonna give you an opportunity to remember what happened, okay? Because the DA is on his way here. If you yeah. wanna find yourself arrested tonight, then keep, keep telling me the story. I'm not trying to tell you the story. I just honestly don't remember. It just really is a blur, a couple of things happened. And I don't know, I, I don't, just don't know. Don't think about covering up for him. No, I'm not. Covering I'm up not, for yourself. You I'm better not, think about that. I'm not trying to cover up for him. I really honestly want to remember what happened. At first, the girlfriend put herself yards away from the incident. But she is a, a decent human being that was, was just as horrified and shocked as we were at this, this terrible loss of life. I don't remember them arguing. I don't remember them going on the ground, nothing. The lady who lives upstairs says she hears Kyle yelling, don't break my legs, don't break my legs. You don't hear any of that. I'm not like, if I remember that, I would tell you. You know what? And I'm not bullshitting you. This is turning into a homicide. And you are right in the middle. We had to convince her that you have no reason to cover this up. We, you know, we understand he's, a, he's your boyfriend, but you know, we have a life that's lost here. And you, as a decent human being, you have a moral obligation to tell us the truth. Okay. He's dead. He's dead. He's boiled to death. His flesh is hanging off of his body. And he was alive because they yelled out to him and he ran. Think of that poor man at the bottom of that hole. Think of that. She's told us that there was a little altercation, there was a scuffle between the two of them. Uh, they were rolling on the ground, and uh, Kyle went into the manhole. And now we're trying to determine whether or not uh, Keith pushed Kyle or he accidentally fell into the hole. There are some guys that are skilled interrogators. Jimmy Fitchion is he's uncanny at that. He can get people to to tell what they don't always want to tell, to open up their soul. I'm Steve. Tell them what the, the girl basically okay, When they're walking back from McDonald's, Kyle puts his arms around her. I got so Seth and Mayhem all over here. That's what sex for Keith. We now had the motive. We now know that he was in a jealous rage. Yeah, Once he knew that his girlfriend was talking to us and telling us the truth, I thought that would help us to elicit a confession from the defendant. That dog is a f nuisance. You should put that thing out of its misery. Excuse my French, but really getting annoying. As he reconstructs the delivery man's last minutes, Detective Austin sees signs that the victim tried to fight back. That's where it was. The knife was in his hand. I took it out of his hand. He was curled up in a fetal position right by the window. Apparently, the victim had a knife on him. Might have had it trying to defend himself. So just lay it out. Let's see what we got. Life is so cheap on the street. This individual was killed over nothing, probably for a pittance of cash that he had on him. I think I see a little bullet hole, but I'm not sure. Let's see. Uh, right, right there, there it is. That's it. That's it. Small caliber, mm -hmm. 22. It's right there, right? 
just seeing how human beings can treat another human being. I'm sure it has one also. It's like garbage. I mean, just taking the garbage and throwing it out the window. It confuses you. Say, why? How could life be so cheap? And, and it is. And there's the hole. Right here. Yeah, that must have hit him right in the heart, man. This guy was not big at all. No, little guy. He didn't have a f***ing prayer. Google ammo. What's up, man? Is the body still there? All right. 10-4, we're on our way. Detective Austin has been called to the scene of a suspicious fire in the Bronx that claimed the life of a 28-year-old mother. That's, that's what makes it suspicious, right there. Yeah. Those wheels do not catch fire. Right. There's really nothing to burn in a hole. Right. Somebody had to throw something in there. There it is. There it is. Oh, man. Step off. Come with me, little girl. A magic carpet ride. It's like a heat wave out here. <laughs> it's the warmest it's been in days. <laughs> 28 and balmy. There was a couple of things that irked me a little bit that was a little strange. Number one, there was a dozen of people who escaped the fire and, and lived. Where, where are they saying this thing started? They're thinking right, right there. Right here. Uh, yeah, that's the point. This is a shame. I'm looking at this woman who just jumped 35 or 40 feet to her death. Well, if everybody else made it out the front door, why wouldn't she have tried to go out the front door? Wow. So was there an underlying reason to this? Was she afraid somebody was out there waiting for her? Maybe a, an ex-husband, an ex-boyfriend? Get a close-up of that tattoo on the back. Yeah, I see it. What does it say? That's her daughter's name. It's her daughter? That's okay. Daughter, yeah. Daughter's in the hospital, right? You eradicate in, in your mind that this is... Uh, young mother. I mean, yeah, you realize that, but you can't let your emotions take over. Yeah. Because if you do, you wouldn't be able to function and do the job that you, you're there to do because you're, you'd be an emotional basket case. I can go upstairs, right? Uh, now, you see this curtain? It's charred. It's cooked. Yeah. See a moth up there? No, well, you know what? The soot got Common sense would down. say, look, it probably got extremely hot upstairs on that third floor. Well, extremely smoky. Did she panic? Oh, a lot of soot. It's actually hot. You can feel the heat still up here. The victim had been holding a birthday party for her 10-year-old daughter when fire engulfed a hallway downstairs. You know what? There's something a little strange here. Everybody goes out the front door with relatively little or no injuries, and yet she chose to jump out the window. This is one of those f***ed up mysteries. Look up there. Oh, man. See the blood up there? Yeah, yeah, see it from her probably cutting her hands. Get down. Yeah. It looked as though she wasn't trying to jump out the window. It looked like she was trying to get to the roof. There was a, uh, a rain gutter, as if she was trying to grab onto that and then possibly get on the roof, but she slipped. Focus it on the blood. I got it. All right, Ready? just turn yours off. Beauty. Okay. No, they can take her. You have uh, tell the guys they can come in. It's the old saying, I mean, uh, if you ran this way, you lived, and if you ran that way, well, that's, that was the end of it. And I think she, uh, unfortunately, chose the wrong path. With no definitive evidence that this fire was set deliberately, it will be ruled an accident. Uh, my wife says that I've become very hard over the years. Yeah. It's not that I don't care. It's just that, again, I've dealt with it so much that I know that, yeah, we're going to miss this person, unfortunately, but then again, tomorrow's another day and life is going to go on. Whose car is this? Uh, measure the manhole, take another look at it. Detective Gary White wants one more look at the crime scene before police make a final push to get the suspect to confess. This gentleman's making a statement that he fell in there. How do you fall into a, a certain circumference that is almost virtually impossible to do? You know, it just doesn't doesn't work itself out. These little technicalities could come up to bite you in court. That's the manhole cover right there? That's the one I want to see the seam come just up and get a, get a, um, Measure that one for me. Get a radio. Two eight. Okay. Two ten. Two ten. Are you kidding me? Where, where's Randy? This is immovable. 
I don't think it was on top of there. I don't think anybody could physically remove it off the top. It probably was off. And what are the chances of one nip in a manhole if you got punched in the face and fell down on your back? 100 to 1? You'd have to be Superman and be... What was the word? Perpendicular? Straight through. It's 225 pounds. Is it that way? I didn't yeah. know that. There ain't no way in a fight that you're gonna... Uh -huh. If you hit, if you fall and hit that... I had to help the guy in there. Whether it was inadvertent or not. Mm -hmm. I just don't see anybody falling in there yeah. without some type of... I think at that injuries. one moment, he was so pissed off. I saw him like and maybe struggling over the whole f you. Push him in. We're out to the right. like a maniac. A final but crucial witness comes forward to support the theory that Masters was in a jealous rage minutes before his friend Kyle McGarity ended up in the manhole. And what do you remember them saying? Like words that you heard? Um, the shorter man said something like, so I guess I won't be making out with her or something like that. And that's when the man first like pushed him up against the mm -hmm. wall and held him there. And I don't, he was, the taller man was saying things, but he was slurring his words a lot, so I couldn't understand yeah. a lot. Of, and he was saying something like, like, don't say that, don't say that. And the woman was standing like diagonally from them, and she was saying something like, sweetie, like, no. She kept saying sweetie, I know. And, and she was like, no, he didn't mean that like that. Or she was trying to calm him down. I don't remember the exact words that she said, mm -hmm. but that's the general sense okay. of what I heard. To me, what she's saying is the victim was scared, and our suspect was angry. I'm not going to say I want to see anything happen to him. I just want to see you know, justice done. If it's if he it was an accident, it's an accident. But if he meant to do it, then he should pay for it. With two witnesses now saying the suspect was in a jealous rage, Jimmy Piccioni will make one last effort to get him to confess. Wayne, Wayne's back from vacation. Nice two weeks in Trinidad. Nice, nice and warm. While his partner was up here freezing his nunnies off. He's been on vacation since he got here. What are you kidding? He's still on vacation. I'm always on vacation. Why not? <laughs> While you were gone, we had this bizarre case. It's like a 69-year-old woman. She's been bedridden for a couple of years. She's a recluse. And she's living with her daughter, who's 45 years old, who's little bots. I feel bad, Doc. You know? It's very sad to see how this poor woman lived. Here's the front of the house. Not bad. The no, not bad, right? not bad. When I opened the door and I walked in, it looked like the monsters. I mean, it was like oh, cobwebs, Lord. the dirt, rats in the kitchen. Here's the kitchen. Look at this kitchen. Look oh. at the shape of that kitchen. I've been in housing projects. They look like the, the Taj Mahal compared to this. There's some writing over here on the wall. I'll show you that. What is writing was on the wall? Oh, it's all over the place. Look at this one. It was all sort of blame for my head. He hit or bashed my head with an iron spoon. Who did that? God damn, 90 cents. <laughs> Look at this. See that it just goes on and on. Right. Look at this, Paul. I mean, this is unbelievable. What the hell is that? Skin and bones, man. Yeah, her toenails were like an inch and a half long. Papa, this woman is skin and bone. I know. This woman is malnourished. Yeah. Very sad, very sad. Very sad. Fly paper all over the place. Look at this. Here's the refrigerator. Here's what's inside. What the <laughs> f <laughs> Whoa! That's it. That's what's in the inside of this it. This is it? That's it. I don't know how long that could sustain life. I will have a long time. If they only knew what you really had to deal with on an everyday basis, you know, they'd say, why isn't this guy totally out of his mind? Well, I'm close, but I'm not that close. He's really wacko. Anybody in this unit has to have something a little off the wall about them. So he's updating me on all the hardship that he had while I was away. Yeah, make him Instead miserable of, too. Right, he want to make me <laughs> miserable too. Hmm. He's nervous. I think he wants to say it, but he's afraid to. Once they decide that, all right, I'll say it, it just comes flowing out. They feel better. You can, like it's, you can see it physically, they feel better. But sometimes it takes a while to get to that point. But, you know, he's not a hardened criminal. Unfortunately, he seems to get stupid when he drinks. Don't make him a bad guy. You know, you feel like you're backed into a corner, so you, you lie. He's got to be scared. But despite Jimmy Piccioni's best efforts, the suspect will not confess, standing by his story that Kyle McGarity died in an accident. Even with no confession, 
the DA is satisfied with the evidence and police are given the go-ahead to arrest and charge Keith Masters with murder. It's hard to say what was really going through his mind, but uh, I believe at that instant he uh, intended to throw him down in. Now, whether he knew what the consequences were with the steam, the temperature of the water, and the depth of the hole, I don't know if he knew all that, but uh, he's still taking a life, and that's a terrible thing. In a stunning reversal, last December, the DA dismissed all charges against Keith Masters, deciding there was not enough evidence to prove Masters pushed his friend into the manhole.